Nika. Well, as, as somebody from, you know, south of the border here, um, <coughs> I mean, if everyone who I've come into contact with from the religion side of the argument was as, as reasoned and as sort of understanding in a bigger, sort of more poetic and beautiful way about their beliefs, I would really be a happier, I think our, my country would be a happier place. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, you were, we were talking about conviction versus belief, uh, but there's another little part of that, which is that many, 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 and I don't know the numbers, but somebody here might, religious people have totally confused faith or belief with knowledge. And they have become completely intertwined. And it, it's, it's very difficult to, to deal with it because I can deal with your beliefs. I can deal with beliefs. Beliefs are fine. I mean, you know, a lot of people have beliefs in a, I mean, a lot of things. And, and, and some things I have to have belief in because I don't have knowledge of. But to take that and but make the next really, step. But then to really, it's, I mean, the Creation Museum, I mean, that is really pushing it to a point where I don't really know what to do because I feel like we're, we're tr it well, just doesn't make any sense. Jordan. The philosophers could be helping people distinguish between factual knowledge and knowledge about values and action, but they don't, and they're often, well, some do, but the rationalists constantly do the same thing with religious claims. You know, think about it this way, you know, the, the story of Genesis, for example, we don't know how old it is, and it's thousands of years old, 5,000 years old, maybe older in oral form. The people who wrote that were not scientists. There weren't any scientists till about 1400 AD. Whatever they were doing wasn't science. They weren't one person, they were whole cultures building those stories. The stories are deeply mysterious. And to hypothesize that there are scientific claims about the nature of the origin of the galaxy and that they should be assessed against modern cosmological theories is, I think, stunningly ignorant. Okay, Ronald, that's well, them's fighting words. <laughs> they certainly are. See, uh, this is all very well, but the fact is that those are the texts which are taken seriously, if not absolutely literally, by 80% of Americans, perhaps 90% of Americans. And when you get sophisticated people um, arguing that, of course, nobody means it that way. The sophisticated understanding of religion is metaphorical. Six days means 14 billion years, don't you see? <laughs> and we, what we need to do is to interpret. Well, the, tr the problem is that theology interpretation is like tennis without a net. Every possible position has been held by theologians and killed for. Right? People have killed others because they believed in free will. Others have killed people because they believed in predestination. Others have, and there are about 100,000 sects just among Christians. And all of these sects believe that all the others, indeed that's one thing they all get right, that all the <laughs> others are just a bunch of rubbish. Rob Buckman. And I absolutely, totally agree with you. And there's proof. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt to agree with you. But actually, there's proof. The, the studies have been done uh, in Laurentian University that actually show that about 7% of the student population out over 15 years will actually answer yes to the question, I, would you kill somebody if God told you to? And, and Ron, Ronald, you put your finger right on it. The problem is not with the inspiration, but the, the, the call to arms. I mean, the, the Mormons are... A, totally revealed religion if you really want to be scared. Mr. Buckman, you would kill someone if God told heaven. you to. Mm. You would kill someone if God told you to. Uh, well, that'd be a real problem. I would increase my medication straight away. <laughs> well, there is that. As, as a practicing, practicing non-supernaturalist, I would have real problem. If, if God says, kill, uh, kill Jordan there, I would say, um, Terribly sorry, I don't believe in you. There's a fabulous book called The Ordeal of Gilbert Pinfold by Evelyn Waugh, yeah. in which he actually listens to the hallucinations, and the hallucinations say, don't tell anybody about us. And he is almost at the point of not telling anybody about the hallucinations. So the answer to your question, Jordan, is no, I wouldn't. Yeah. If they said kill Jordan, I'd say absolutely. So let's, let's, Long, talk, about, let's talk about let's talk about murderousness among no. atheists. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk. Hey, Jordan, sorry. Just Jordan, you were saying? Let's well, talk. let's talk about murderousness among atheists. That's the other. Oh. No, no, hold on a sec. 
So let's take the Nazis to begin with. No, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. Let's take the Nazis to begin with, who were deeply anti religious. The other low trick. And let's take the communists, who were uh, consummate rationalists and who killed. 60 million people in Russia they between 1990 and 1959. That's the whole point. It was just another religion. Without God. So was without it conviction? God, without God, but with faith. The whole point, if you, look at, if you look at what happened to those people who collaborated with their own trials because they had faith in the Communist Party, yeah. it's faith I'm against. It's not God. Well, you know, it's, it's faith, yeah. and God is just one of the things that most people have faith in and that you guys are defending as faith. Right. I'm saying faith is intrinsically bad. Well, well you're saying Michael, if yeah. it's, no. uh, on the one hand, it's unavoidable, and on the other hand, yeah. it's bad. I, There's said it was I, said, I said conviction and mm. emotional response is unavoidable, well, not un faith. Un un faith un is avoidable. Okay. Not unless you're is familiar. violence avo avoidable? I, the question is, would you kill if God told you, could you ask, would you kill if there was an, if someone gave you a billion dollars to do it? Would you kill if your child was at stake? There's a lot of reasons why people would say they would kill. You could say, I think I would kill because God told me to. It's especially ridiculous because um, I don't believe in God. But the point is, someone is willing to kill someone else. And will religion take away your personal responsibility for being willing to kill? Well, obviously, it did for Abraham. Robin and Michael. I don't Robin think so. I, it's my study, turn to talk. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, there. I accept that. <laughs> Uh, uh, one of the problems I have is what, uh, Ronald, is your conf it seems to me you're confounding faith with credulousness. And I, I agree entirely yes. with you when it comes to subscribing to uh, a comprehensive ideology that results in the kind of mass murder, whether it's uh, at the hands of uh, Marxists or, or Zionists or, or, um, or whatever group that may be whipped up in the name of a particular creed. Um, to, to extirpate their enemy, I don't, regardless, all right? Mm -hmm. But what I think of, uh, of in terms of faith is something far more subtle, something far more uh, gentle mm -hmm. than that. It's in, it's in terms of an openness and indeed eventually mm -hmm. a relationship with the, with the transcendent. And that therefore that kind mm -hmm. of language doesn't mm -hmm. constitute the threat to the other, doesn't involve the annihilation of the other, mm -hmm. doesn't require one to subscribe to a bloody creed, whether it's can, Christian or whatever. Can I just interrupt long enough to read something that speaks to this point and then have you answer a question coming out of it? Because in yeah, 1974, we're saying. 19, <laughs> 1974 Massey lecture, George Steiner, the European intellectual, had this to say. Let's put this up so everybody at home can read along. There's been a marked decline in the role played by formal religious systems. In Western society, Christian faiths, which had organized so much of the Western view of men's identity and of our function in the world, lost their hold over sensibility and over daily existence, affecting the very center of Western moral intellectual being, leaving an immense emptiness. The decay of a comprehensive Christian doctrine had left in disorder. Essential perceptions of social justice, of the meaning of human history, of the relation between mind and body, of the place of knowledge in our moral conduct. Where there is vacuum, new energies and surrogates arise. Is Steiner saying we can't live without a belief system, regardless of what it is? You gotta believe? Yeah.